Hey everybody, what's up? This is Joed Lopez, aka Prophetic. Um, I'm here to kind of showcase a little, uh, I guess a mini version of a presentation I did at FOSCON most recently, um, based out of Philadelphia, PA, smaller Linux conference, um, very nice, about 100, 150 people, um, and it was a great time. And uh, this is what I shared, and I kind of, I'm giving you like a short crash course version of what I shared. Um, and it actually is maybe a little different because based on the great questions and comments we had, um, you know, it was not exactly where I was going with some parts, but again, that's what I like, the engagement, the back and forth, the um, pushback, and uh, learning in the midst of tension and trying to reconcile our values with practicality and and the the po social political economic realities that we face in a di in this digital age so um enough ranting um here is um my take on linux marketing and why it sucks of course this is a playful take on another type of presentation from that's very popular so let's start so here's a general run through what I'm going to go over, you know, and sticking with digital mostly as when it comes to marketing, um, I'm going to give some scenarios. I might skip that part. I might just go right into the, the examples, um, for the breakdown and why, when we think about marketing, we don't think about just what, how something looks like. Um, we think about the entire process. Marketing is supposed to think about when someone's a newcomer to the website to how do we convert a newcomer to a long standing, you know, user or developer or donor. And we think about, we think about that first impression. Um, and we think about what, how we're going to roll out that first impression with that long-term relationship in mind. Um, and so that's where that's my, my passion is how we get to, how do we cross that line? So let's jump right in. A little bit more about myself. Um, this is not just textbook things for me that I just kind of like consume on the internet or read some books and that's it. Um, I actually practice a lot of this stuff um, and uh, helped a nonprofit grow and increase giving 25% um, year over year. Again, it's a group effort. It's a team effort. Um, but there was some solid strategies that were um, put in place uh, by myself. And um, and as a team, we worked towards that goal and I'm very happy with those results. Um, I increased a membership of an alumni association um, from 50 members to about 600 plus members in one year. Um, that was with um, through working with uh, universities um, uh, in New Jersey. And that was great. Um, third point. Um, this is really interesting because we did this in a, in a, at a company to work with. Um, using their blended model of digital and print campaigns, um, I specifically used that model um, to bring over a, close to nine hundred thousand dollars. I think it was actually a little bit more than that in revenue. And that's not even encountering the continual revenue that they get year over year. So it's definitely over a million. But when I was there and initiated those things, um, it's it hit like about almost two million dollars in revenue. And it was like a uh, leadership college leadership program. And um, I was there for like three and a half years. And so initially, uh, you know, I had this hunch that, man, marketing and technology and how things are framed can really have a big impact. And when I went to this company, um, learned a lot of things, but also confirmed a lot of things that I already knew and saw the impact that it can have. I felt like, you know what, I really need to take what I've learned and, and give it to people and the, the causes that I care about. And so I care about social justice. I care about faith-based organizations, and I also care about open source. And so that's how I got to Panvisio, my organization that I started. Um, since that time, um, I've kind of scaled things down. I'm just I'm just supporting one client because I work full time at uh, UPenn now, uh, University of Pennsylvania, um, overseeing uh, uh, an opportunity-based program there. And so I just have one client. And in the midst of me working full time. My family, I try to give back and where I, wherever I can. Um, so that's that's my little bit more about my background. Um, here's a couple of disclaimers that I have to showcase. One, man, everyone's opinionated, especially the open source community, 
And this is just to get the conversation going. I don't think this conversation is happening happening um, nearly enough. And I want to move the and when it does happen, it stays in this one little loop. And I think I want to move the conversation forward. So there's no right or wrong. Technically, I'm just kind of you know trying to move the conversation forward. And if this gets you started in your project and your organization, that's really the the most I can ask for. Uh, I'm not a guru. I'm just sharing with wor what works for me and based on my research. I'm not perfect. Um, that's just obvious. I uh, just wanted to share what I learned. Um, and also, some of these solutions are not free and open source software. Uh, they're proprietary. They're closed. They're cloud-based. And um, I think we just have to um, wrestle with that a little bit. Um, kind of reminds you of the people who are like privacy advocates. And always talk, I use Linux because it's private and secure and that kind of thing. But yet they use Gmail and they use Google services. It's like if you want to, depending on... If you really want to go there, we can go there. But when we look at the average person, especially the the new average Linux user, um, I think it's it's safe to say that it's a journey, it's a growth process. You know, when I first used Linux, I didn't really know the difference between you know free software versus open source software, and I had to learn those things. And by that process, I adopted a lot of those value sets, and I'm still growing. I'm still going there. But um, there's still trade-offs that we have to live with. And so uh, that's going to be different for everybody. So I'm not here to tell you what that line is. Um, I'm just sharing if you're going to use these tools, this is how you can use them in a, in a way that's probably ethical or, or more ethical at least um, than what big companies or big corporations are doing. Um, also, a side goal of this is that hopefully by this kind of talk and having these kind of presentations and, and, and videos, I can spark some interest in, in, in development of alternatives that are free and open source. That's really a big goal of mine, a long-term goal of mine. Maybe a Linux marketing foundation that helps projects scale with more donors and more users. And so that's kind of like the ultimate goal too here, um, because I definitely want to see the tools that I've used to help other organizations be successful in this space, be free and open source. Um, it is an art and science, meaning that you can apply some of these things and it might not get you anywhere. Um, and that's because it's just like abuela's cooking. Abuela is um, the Spanish word for grandma. And it's not just what you do, it's how you do it. So I use this example because my grandmother used to make an amazing dish and she did it perfectly all the time. She can cook with her eyes closed and you know in her in her sleep she can make this dish she was so good at it she made it so many so many years and when my sister took the recipe and she tried it it was always off a little bit and she would get so frustrated because she's following the recipe and I'm just here to say that marketing is a science there's a technical aspect to it especially digital marketing but there's also an art form and there's nuance and we have to really engross ourselves in this world um, to really get that and that just takes time and experience so even if it's not you, even though you're saying to yourself, well, I don't want to be a whole marketer to, you know, scale my program. I just want to get some tips and tricks. That's fine. I think it's important that you at least through this presentation identify some key principles so that when you give the give the reins to someone who is in marketing, you can know what they what what it looks like and know and spot what's some good principles and good tactics to go by and not get um, you know, uh, misguided by someone who pretends like they know what they're talking about. So again, this is not for someone for you to become a marketing person. If you're a developer, be a developer, stay a developer, but at least get the core principles and the basics so that when it comes time to hand the reins over to that person, you have a good handle or a good pulse of what some of the core things are to know what marketing is and to know what marketing is not which gets me to this slide. Um, marketing is not just having a website. Having a website is equivalent of being listed in the phone book. That doesn't mean Jack, you're just there. Um, graphic design is not marketing. A lot of people think that if something looks pretty and nice, that's marketing. No, that's not marketing. Um, also, marketing is not sales or is not fundraising. Those things can be used to that degree. Um, they have a lot of overlap, um, but Marketing is really a setup for that sales process. And when I say sales, you can use that for fundraising, for donate uh, donations. Um, eventually, someone has to decide 
to give you something or they have to decide to do something. Marketing sets up, um, well, I'll get into the exact uh, answer in a second, but there is a separation between marketing and then getting someone to do something which is more dealing with sales. Um, here's what um, some terms that people kind of confuse or blend with uh, marketing and it's important that we get the definitions right um, because and again I always I just do this because um, we got to know where one thing ends and the other concept begins so think of this as a think of marketing as an overarching umbrella there's all kinds of marketing there's digital marketing there's education based marketing there's content marketing um, and there's a spectrum of these concepts and so branding think of it as on one side of the spectrum of being long term there's no really ROI on this. You're just getting a message out there with no real agenda other than to pull an emotional, um, evoke an emotional response out of someone or make an association of like class or status um, with your brand, with your, with that image. So I use the Nike billboard, you know, a lot of Nike billboards you see, you can barely see the shoes, but you see the athlete in some championship environment or doing something super athletic and amazing. They're, that's branding. They're just trying to create a, almost like that, that, um, that experiment with a dog. We ring the bell and then the dog starts to, you know, salivate. That's kind of like essentially what they're trying to do to us. They're trying to like, every time you see that logo, you think of something and, and a picture comes up to mind. Um, that's branding. Um, there's no way it's hard to measure that because it's so long term. The other side of the extreme spectrum is advertising um advertising is is like taking marketing and trying to sneak in some sales within the marketing um, format uh, so it's sales with a short-term agenda with a specific call to action or a call for a transaction to be made so you see a coupon you see something you know you know for sale you're you know for the limited time only get this for this price um that is advertising there's a specific angle there that's short term and they want to get you to do something and so it's like sales but it is um, using sales with a marketing spin um so that they're separate that's a separation there and then lastly you know communications um you know that's pretty much psychology to help prepare the conversation and expectation um, and you, all these things are used by marketing. So what, when you, how do you get someone to the website? Do you use clickbait on a YouTube video or do you use something else that's more straightforward? Cause it's, it's education marketing. It's like five things to improve X, Y, and Z or three things. Why I love this distribution over that distribution, whatever it is. And so that's communication that's framing that's used in marketing. Um, and so when we think about all these things, we have to be, we have to know what they are and not get them confused um, because those things matter. Uh, this is what the textbook definition is, which is kind of fluffy. I won't pass that. It's essentially what it is, but I like to think of it like this. It's creating the conditions or atmosphere for awareness if you had to summarize marketing marketing is awareness it's creating awareness creating however way you create that awareness guerrilla marketing you put a you put like a flyer or a sticker some weird spot on the bathroom stall and it's just like and it makes you want to look in and see what did i just see that is a form of marketing it's creating awareness however way some people do it in a very you know, sleazy nasty way and some people do it in a more ethical, professional way, an authentic way, and with the ultimate goal of having someone know someone, know something, or do something you think is important. So, again, there's a there's different ways to do it. Some you might have problems with, others may not. Like look at the old GoDaddy commercials with uh, I think the the race car driver Dana Patrick. And all the sleazy um, ways they marketed and, and almost like they, they pretty much made um, made the uh, 
objectified women as part of their marketing strategy. You know, that's something that, again, that was a way to do it. That doesn't always have to be that way. Um, now they're doing a little more tasteful things. But that again, there's different, there's a spectrum here. The, here's the key. The And this is what's so great about where we are with marketing today. And what is marketing today? The days of the sleaze balls and the car, the pushy type of of marketing and sales and and asking for donations and being rough and being aggressive those days are over this is what gets me so excited because the best marketing is creating awareness by being authentic that is the best marketing the best market again I quote this on this quote me on this mark uh, authenticity is the best marketing period this is why word of mouth marketing is the best form of marketing because you could spend zero dollars on marketing, but then some if your friend said it, they know they're not gonna lie to you. There's no agenda behind it. They're gonna take your word for it and they're gonna do something based on what you said as a friend. So we have to like kind of like take a big sigh of relief because in this day and age, the sleazy marketers don't win anymore. They, it doesn't work anymore. The new marketing is based on authenticity, being real, not being pushy, and also being service oriented. And so this is why a lot of our favorite our favorite projects, they come from people who are so service oriented. They're helping us learn things as a new Linux user or learning this, this software. Uh, when someone's really generous, there's somehow some weird connection where I actually want to learn more about your project now because the community feel is so accepting and so open and so helpful. And so that's association being there, you know, uh, and that helps with your marketing and your branding. So that's why I think everyone needs to chill and relax when they hear the word marketing because it's no longer a dirty word. It's no longer a bad word. Here's another reason why. I put the word under underlined ultimate why did I use that word? Again, remember, we learned that advertising is short term. You're asking for a decision very soon. Marketing is more all, like this type of marketing, the one that wins, is more like it's okay with long term. Sorry about that. It's more long term. And so when it comes to uh, like almost like dating or relationships, if you have a first date and someone asks for that hand in marriage, you're gonna you're gonna want to leave that date as soon as possible. You're gonna want to find some way out of that place because you might be dating a psychopath, you know, who thinks that they want to get married in that first date. It's the ultimate goal, the ultimate goal of creating awareness and then eventually having them do something or know something that you think is important. And so again, it's not about being pushy anymore. Branding versus marketing. I think I'll skip that. So it's no longer a bad word. Here are a couple points I'll let I'll leave you with in terms of basics or intro to marketing. Um, it costs money. End of story. Um, if you want to use marketing and use tools of marketing in a digital sense and use it for free, um, fine, you can do that for free. But only amateurs live there. If you're serious about your project and if you're, if you, here's the thing, you got to know who you are and where you are. If you are just starting out, use the free stuff. If you, if this is just a hobby project, use the free stuff. But if you're really serious about your distribution, if you're really serious about your project, and if you think this project can um, make society better, make democracies better, like, you know, um, I'm really up on this project called Freedom Box right now. can't get enough of it. I'm really learning more about this. Very powerful in terms of privacy and, and um, protecting users from all the craziness that's happening on the Internet. Then you have a moral obligation to make appropriate investments 
too. Marketing is for the suits type of thinking. Like, hey, I'm I'm the I'm the programmer, I'm the developer. I don't do the marketing stuff. I'm not the bean counter. Leave that for those suits upstairs and middle management or leave those. That's for the corporate corporate uh, organizations, the big names. They have a marketing team and a legal team and a PR team. I want to be scrappy. I want to be that small, nimble organization because it's like some type of like um, romanticizing of that space when you're just starting out. There's projects that have been in, that's been in existence for decades look at Slackware, that they're still operating as a scrappy little organization. And look what's happening. It's on the on the verge of being shut down. Of course, part of that's bad decision making, but a lot of that too is also on them. And it's on us for letting it get to that point too, as a Linux community, as an open source community. So, so um, not to get too far off topic, but this whole idea of like marketing for the suits, I can have, have zero tolerance for. If you think everything's going to be free for marketing strategies, or if you think marketing is only for the suits, then you're really just left to your own devices. I, I, no one can help you. It's the, you just, I use this analogy too. Like if you think I'm not a, if you think uh, I'm not a techie person, is a, is a bad excuse to not to learn something, learn how to use computers. It's kind of like you're doing the same thing. You know, there's people who have been working. And been in a in, a, in this information age, in this knowledge based economy, and they still don't know how to use computers. It's been twenty plus years. This is all the degrees you could have gotten if you studied this space since Windows ninety five came out. So this excuse of I'm not a techie person is a bad excuse. It's no longer valid. And the same is true if you think. Oh, well, I'm a developer. I'm not a, I'm not a marketing person. Well, guess what? We have the internet and we can learn and we can test and we can experiment things. And you can, you know, again, again, you don't have to be the marketer, but you can learn the basic principles so that when it comes time to hand delegate that role, you have the power to do that. Um, plus there's like websites like lynda.com that YouTube, all kinds of marketing education platforms that can help. And it's time to learn. It's time to do this. You can't do this stuff without selling your soul. Um, it's just a matter of uh, finding what it is and then you determining, again, because it's so great about that. The middleman is, it's, you got, we have the internet, the middleman is out of the way. You determine what's the right marketing mix for you. You don't want to advertise on Facebook? Don't advertise on Facebook. But advertise somewhere, some platform, and pay for it. Find a way. Okay. Um, here's why it's important to me. Why it should be important to everybody. Despite, and after this we'll go through some examples, I promise. This, we can't equate open source success completely just because enterprise are using our tools. We can. When we look at the landscape of the internet, how countries are trying to block it, all these different things, we can't say every, you know, use people, the number of people are using it is, is the important, important thing. It's part of it, but we can't, ex, you know, think that enterprise adoption and, and consumer use is the end all be all there has to be more than that and because the whole indie developer the indie artist even um scene is happening now we have a the best opportunity ever and lastly the best product doesn't win and i'm sick of it there's projects that that started and ended i wish kept on and um they they, they all say the same thing Lack of funding, lack of developers, lack of awareness. They didn't get the adoption. How can you adopt a technology that you don't know nothing about? Awareness is key. So with that said, um, I'm going to go see some examples. Here I have DistroWatch. Now, we give DistroWatch a hard time a lot of the times because it looks like it's stuck in uh, the early days of the Internet. And look, just look at it. Look how... 
noisy, busy, cluttered it looks. Um, and you see, when it comes from advertising, you see ads literally like 360. 360 ads. You got one right here to the left. You, it's really a, a, on a footer of this website, like a floating footer here, floating down as you go down. And then you even see it on the right when you come back up. Now, here's the thing. Is this the greatest thing in the world for a user experience? No, of course not. But this website is essentially a very straightforward, albeit definitely robust database system with just a base, a straightforward, simple, you know, functional, I should say, uh, functional UI. And so I don't beat up on it too much because it serves its purpose. It's working. And if it's making money from advertising, that means it can continue to give us this service. And that's really the end of it. So, um, as a marketer, you know, and, and maybe not as a graphic designer, but as a marketer, this gets okay for me. It is what it is. Marketing doesn't have to be beautiful. It has to be functional and it has to get people to do something. And this website forces me to, um, do something. And I usually, when I come here, I, um, I know why I'm coming here. And again, um, you know, maybe this UI here could be a little could be down here, more center of the screen, give it more of a first class type of experience in terms of like, tell me what I'm supposed to do here, you know. Um, but other than that, though, and when it comes to the marketing standpoint, like when people come here, they, they it's a functional, basic um, experience. It's, it's, it's more it has utility than than something else. So with that, with that being said, this gets a pass from me. Let's talk about this. Ask Noah. Um, now, I think in early episodes, um, Noah mentioned that he doesn't really plan on um, monetizing this, making this as some type of cash cow, more of a service. And if that's similar to you, then that's okay. But you got to know where you are and, and what you're doing. Um, some people they want to have this basic service, but they also want to be financially sustaining. And you get to you know ride that balance. Um, but if I were Noah and I wanted to monetize this website, um, there are a couple things I would do. One, I would have an email opt-in. Um, some people don't like that, but I mean, it's been settled. Email opt-ins work. They convert. People come here for a purpose. They have an agenda or they learn about the agenda of the or the purpose of the website and they're willing to make a trade. They're willing to trade their email for something in return. So that's the, the most basic sense. It could be a, a summary newsletter type thing, um, or even better, it could be notifications of when you're about to go live. That's a that's that's a nice trick to garner more listeners instantaneously by giving a notification that hey, we're about to go live. Especially if that's the purpose of signing up, and you explain that in in advance. Um, lastly, here's what I would do is I would try to cultivate the most affiliate links possible and try to spread it out per episode. So if there's a product that I really support and really recommend, I'm dropping my affiliate link to Amazon on there. Or if the product doesn't have an affiliate link or affiliate program, then I'm going to actually pursue that partner and say, hey, let's make a private one-to-one -one affiliate pro uh, program. You know, give me a special link that if you see that if you get business from my link, you know, I get a, a piece of that. Now, again, some people might have a problem if with even that, and that's okay. But guess what? Just because you're trying to find some type of financial sustainability doesn't mean that it has to be all for you. I love it when, when organizations, especially nonprofits, do this thing where if you buy one product, you get you, you buy a pair for a child across the country, you know, in the third world country, you know, um, uh, Tom's Shoes does this model, pretty much pioneered this model, and it's a very great model. Um, and so we can translate something that's already been working in marketing, in financial sustainability, in social entrepreneurship realms, um, which is a thing, it's been a thing for years now, and translate that to free and open source software. So if every time you 
use an affiliate link from Amazon through Ask Noah, every month he gives 40%, 50%, 70%, whatever it is, 10% to this special project, you know, to help with this nonprofit that introduces technology to kids from inner cities, whatever. So there's all kinds of opportunities here to not just make make it financially sustaining for you, but to be a financial benefit to other pro, uh, programs. And so we have to really have a reset on this thing of one, oh, it's bad to make money in, in, in false communities. And then two, that we can't be a little more creative and imaginative when it comes to what we do with our funds once we find greater financial sustainability. So there are all kinds of great things that you can do. So if I was, if I was Noah, uh, I will have an email opt-in. And to even turn it up a notch, I would even say, hey, I'll write an article or, or do a YouTube video series or a basic straightforward one and say five things you need to learn about if you want to try to game on Linux or three things every new Linux user needs to know, a little mini crash course on YouTube, and there's three 10-minute YouTube videos. And that's it. And then it's almost like a drip campaign. Every other day, they get it. So they sign up, they get the first video. Two days later, they get the second video. Two days later, they get the third video. So it's, it's, it's called education marketing. As I said, there's all kinds of it. You can use all kinds. And at the end of like a YouTube series, a mini educational series, you plug what you want to plug in the process. So th- if you hope you enjoy this service, I hope you enjoy this educational video. Um, if you can, share this with the friends and family who might be helpful and catch my show on this time. Boom. That's it. That's really it. So it can be very powerful. Speaking of email opt-ins, uh, I used to volunteer for UB Ports. And um, we didn't have this website at the time. Uh, we had a, a, this is a great website. Um, but we had a, a more stripped down basic version of the website. But here's what was really cool. At first, um, uh, you know, it was a resistance from uh, some of the team about dropping in some email opt-in forms in the homepage. They had a little, lot of reservation. So after much discussion and much persuasion, they finally said, okay, let's try it out. And um, to their surprise, they found out that when, they, when we use an email opt-in, very similar to this, we would get 15 to, uh, uh, actually, when we first did it, we would get like to 20 to 30 a day of people subscribing. And these are like validated subscribes. Use MailChimp's double opt-in, meaning they had to confirm their email address in order to subscribe. And we get like 30, 20 to 30 a day. And then when things slowed down after a while, it was like about 10 to 12, 15 a day. But still, that's pretty, that's pretty impressive, especially when they weren't paying for any marketing. Um, formally. And so this is a great way to serve your your population, your target population, because look what, look at this email opt-in. It says, give me your email, and I'm telling you I'm a developer, and I'm going to subscribe. What's great about this is that you get to customize the language you use when it's time to reach out to them. So if there's a hackathon for new users, I'm not going to send that to to developers per se. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. I don't know. But if I really want to convince the users to go, I might send a separate email just for them. And the language I use will be way more tailored to them than it it would be for developers if I said there was a sprint that we're doing. And um, that's really powerful for persuasion, influence, and getting people to say yes to something that you think is important. Guys, it doesn't even have to be about money, guys. It could be a social media party where everyone gets to share a couple links about the project all at one time with the same hashtag and see if they get it trending in a region or whatever it is. And then that's really you're organizing through that method of email blasts and timing and all that thing, all those kind of great things. And so this is and this goes a long way because and when it comes to social media, platforms change, algorithms change. There's different rules and different cha- uh, things that, that get changed. When it comes to email, you control your email address. You control that. And that stays with you no matter what clients or systems you use in the back end. That's, those are your email addresses. Whereas social media, Twitter, who knows if you're getting seen or not because of Twitter's algorithm for the news feed. So this is why it's so important that you have email. Let's talk about FOSCON. FOSCON, great, 
great conference. Again, this is where I showcased the, 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 the speaking, each, the, the presentation. Um, again, no email, no email address. They have Twitter, they have Facebook, which is great. They want to stay connected, but I want an email address. And also there might be a chance where I would love to have a membership portal where if I sign up, I get a link of all the previous recorded videos in one shot, in one wiki or something like that. I know there's some people I feel like, why put it behind an email subscription to, uh, uh, barrier of some sort? Uh, but you, if you want to really serve your community, you got to know where your community is coming from and um, what brings them in. And so unless you're able to talk to them, it's going to be hard to do that. So you got to have some type of like straightforward form of communication. And so by having this email address, opt-in, um, and asking for like a, a, you choose a donation for a membership, it could be zero, it could be one, it could be whatever. Um, that's a, another way. Um, uh, at the end of the conference, as you're closing out, when everyone's on that, um, you know, that great emotional high of having a great time talking with people about free and open source software and just really, you know, you know how it is when we get together. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, that's when you might make your pitch about being a member and donating and using a website to showcase how to donate and instructing people to donate at the, at the last session. So again, it could be a little, it could be a little, um, intimidating to do this, but when you tell them, if you split it again, FOSCON supports this project or FOSCON supports that project. So part of your membership dues goes towards this. That can be a very powerful mechanism for scaling your conference and also making a difference. I'm not going to spend too much time here, but elementary OS has a very clean website. I know they got in trouble last, last, uh, not too long ago with the language they use. Um, but uh, they believe in what they're doing and they believe that, you know, having it funded makes it more more possible that they could deliver a better experience and and get there faster because they have the development uh, behind it. Um, so, again, this is a nice layout. Custom. Zero. Boom. Purchase. Very clean. Very straightforward. Pay what you want. So... I know that's controversial, but, you know, elementary found has found how they want to do it. You know, UB ports, ask Noah, they're all, everyone's going to be different in different situations. You got to decide what's going to be your, there's a spectrum here, guys. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but there's a spectrum here. You got to decide how you want to play this. Everyone else will have that line that they want to draw on the sand and say, Hey, I can't, I feel more comfortable with this. Sometimes you can't know what that line is unless you try something. So experiment, do something. Don't just uh, think about it. Do something. And here's some great um, materials that this can help you with. So Digital Marketer, um, I'm a member. It's a great, great uh, platform for learning. Um, very simple, easy to use. I guess this is like the Linux Academy for marketing here. Um, and uh, they have great articles, even if you don't pay for the service or of, of like their learning platform. Um, you can find great articles here. And so this one is 14 tips to help you write successful Facebook ads. Um, if you don't feel like it's something that you want to do on Facebook, then try Twitter ads. If you don't like that, try Mastodon. There's no advertising platform here, but do active recruiting and active, um, you know, uh, uh, requests for um, support, donations, developers, recommendations, feedback on whatever platform you choose. Be intentional, though, um, because we need your projects. We need your 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 uh, your services to really thrive, not just barely survive. Um, and you know. It's getting harder and harder these days to compete with the noise. So we have to cut through the noise and uh, make this happen. So with that said, uh, take it back to conclusions. Um, we need to treat digital marketing as a first class citizen, a first class priority, not as a nice to have. Like we're done. It's the days of marketing being a nice to have are over with. 
in the nineties, we probably didn't need, need it that much because we had the, the whole dot com bubble and all that hype that came along with that. A lot of eyeballs were there, but now it's a noisy place. There's over 500, I think 800 ads that you see just on your way to work on average. One study said, so we have to cut through the noise and it requires unprecedented and radical action. Don't overthink it. Test, experiment, regroup, start small. And um, sometimes if you don't know where you land on how, you know, with marketing and what platforms to use, like if that's, if, if using Facebook is, you feel is unethical to you, you know, sometimes if, or if you're not sure if it's unethical to you, sometimes you have to like push that line a little bit to learn where you f- exactly land on that line. And personally, just to give you my personal take on Facebook marketing, it is still one of the most underused, the most cost effective way to uh, monetize and to, and to um, build your base. Un- incredible. And it's not always going to be that way because people are getting hip to the fact that Facebook marketing is cheap and it's still powerful because how, how easily you can target. And it's time that we stop letting the, the, the quote unquote big evil corporations use that against us and weaponize that. We need to go where people are, educate them. And if they want to come with us, we'll, we'll win over people who will be blown away by this whole free and open source movement. We have to go where people are. Um, and so don't overthink it. Don't get too analytical. Test and try. And then share what you learned for the community. Blog about that. Make a YouTube video about that. And then you're doing content marketing now. And that's very powerful. Be authentic. Um, lastly, um, as much as I would love to become a voice in marketing in Linux, um, I don't have to. There are many great marketing educators out there, great principals ranging from Seth Godin to Gary Vaynerchuk, which is my personal favorite. Um, and if, when it comes to fundraising, you think, think like a salesperson, you know, uh, Grant Cardone. Again, I, I don't agree with a lot of the, everything everyone says of those people who I learn from, but I take what I can from them and I translate that with my moral compass in mind. There are certain things that I won't do that this one person says that I just don't feel like is necessary, is not needed, or it's too much, or it's too extra, it's beyond. And I just don't do it. So we gotta be, we can't be so afraid from hearing from people who are different from us, who might have a different um, ideology than us. And we have to just learn and pick and choose and, and really, exp- and that's part of the learning process. Okay, so with that said, um, I hope you take something out of this. I hope it makes you think at least, and hopes I hope that makes you try something, um, because uh, Linux marketing as it stands now sucks. And if you take just any percentage of this presentation and put into practice, you will be helping it suck less. Thank you so much. This is Joel Lopez, Prophetic Seven Seven Seven. Hope to catch you soon. And if you wanna. Uh, talk to me a little bit more about marketing just to chit chat um, you can find me on the hand on telegram on that handle prophetic 777 and on youtube prophetic 777 have a great one see ya